Thanks, Craig. Take your seats, we can get going here. Westside Unitarian Universalist Church on this really lovely spring morning. My name is Linda Fippen, and my pronouns are she, her, and hers. I'm pleased and privileged to serve as president of the Board of Trustees for Westside, and will be leading today's service, which is the kickoff for our annual funds canvas. Uh, if you're in the sanctuary, and you can probably see from, from YouTube as well, we don't have our usual setup. We have tables arranged, lovely tables, and thanks to all of this for a crew that set this all up yesterday. Um, so it was uh, Michelle um, Knifing, and Harvey, Elizabeth Corbett, uh, Mark Pankoff, and Judith Finer. Thank you all so much for giving up your Saturday afternoon to do this lovely setup. It's a tradition in uh, Unitarian Universalism to have Universalism to have lay-led services, and today's feature will feature presentations by members of the congregation, as well as an opportunity for questions and discussions. Whether you have joined us in person this morning or are watching on YouTube today or at some point in the future, uh, we are welcoming you wherever you came from and however you're watching. We are many different people, we come from many different backgrounds, and we come to seek meaning and community. After today's service, in addition to the usual coffee and conversation, we will have uh, a lovely potluck lunch. Um, if you didn't bring something, uh, which I didn't, I was busy preparing for this, <laughs> so, but don't worry, we always have plenty of food and would love to share. And I will have an opportunity to have conversation, something to eat, and get to know each other better. You will find announcements of upcoming events, other useful information in your order of service, or these will have been scrolling on your screen if you're watching on YouTube. This information can also be found on our website and in our weekly newsletter. So, as those of you who have been members and friends of Westside for a while know, this is the time of year when we have our annual canvas in which we seek the financial support of the congregation to fund the work of this church. At the congregational meeting last month, the Board of Trustees presented a draft budget for consideration. Today, you will be hearing from leaders of committees whose support the board has included in the draft budget. 
But before we move on to that part of today's service, let's pause and take a moment to quiet our wandering thoughts and settle in to a more peaceful and receptive state. To help us into that state, Chris Ad Edkins is going to ring our singing bowl. We also have our chalice lighting words for this morning. The flaming chalice is the symbol of our Unitarian Universalist faith. And we also have our community candles that represent the unpleasant things that are going on in the community or in the world and the good things that are happening in the world and in our community right now. Look to this day. For it is life, the very life of life. In its brief course lie all the verities and realities of your existence, the bliss of growth, the glory of action, the splendor of beauty. For yesterday is but a dream and tomorrow is only a vision. But today lived well makes every yesterday a dream of happiness and every tomorrow a vision of hope. Look well, therefore, to this day. Now comes your opportunity to, to participate. I'm going to ask the choir to come up front and lead us in singing number 145 in the hymnal that's As Tranquil Streams. For the first, for the past few months, you've been hearing the phrase, love unites, caring connects, community thrives. Whether you call this a slogan or a motto or maybe even watchwords, the phrase embodies who we are, what we do, and how these things build and maintain thriving community. The theme of this year's canvas, Giving Green to Thrive, is a reminder that bringing these words to fruition will require the financial support of the congregation. 
As I mentioned before, at the congregational meeting, the Board of Trustees presented a draft budget that we have described as visionary. This budget goes beyond the financing of Westside's day-to-day -day essential operations, paying the staff, purchasing insurance, keeping the lights on, keeping the lawn mowed, and so on. This visionary budget included new items under ministry that reflect plans and projects needing financial support that have been proposed by the Green Sanctuary, Marketing, Aesthetics, and Safety Committees. Today, representatives from those committees will talk about their activities and plans. Although Earth Church is not a committee, it is supported indirectly through Westside's paid affiliation with the Wild Church Network, and we will hear from them too. So I, what we will do is after each presentation, there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions of the speaker. So if you um, have a question, raise your hands and Judy will pass you the microphone. Is anyone uh, logged on to the, to the um, to the YouTube, because if they have questions, I can put, if you have questions, you can put them in the chat. Can you log on, Chris? No? Oh, you're not on. Is anyone? Okay. Sorry. All right, so I'm going to go ahead with Yetta Jaeger speaking for the, for the uh, Green Sanctuary Committee. I guess I should have worn green today. So many of you are involved in our Green Sanctuary initiative, and many of you are aware that we're facing an existential crisis that's caused by our overuse of petrochemicals, plastics, oil, and gas, of forests that are now growing houses en masse. But because of the economics, it's as difficult for us to reduce our carbon footprint here at West Side as it is for society at large. But it is important for us to show leadership in this area, to set an example, and that takes money and effort. I'm proud of what we've accomplished so far. Jerry and Alice Thornton in the back of the sanctuary there um, helped with many of you involved organizing a tree planting event recently that added around 55 trees to our property and many, many more trees in the community elsewhere in West Knox County and probably out in other counties as well. Beyond this, Charlie Dudney, Craig Brandt, and our dynamic building and grounds duo have been collecting information to plan for HVAC, um, which is, stands for Heating, ventilation, air conditioning. Thank you, Charlie. Um, improvements. Recently, Charlie initiated a um, quote for a geothermal heat pump that could potentially be use our property over here to uh, reduce the cost and the energy use um, of our heating system. We've also started an, a TVA energy assessment, and we'll be getting a report from them soon, hopefully. In addition to that, um, some of our committee members, Elizabeth Greenwood and Charlie, are working on a plan that we hope to submit to UUA in order to get accredited as a green sanctuary um, congregation. But we're also looking forward to some new activities in the future. Aesthetics is an important element of spirituality, in my view which is why we have a new aesthetics committee. We feel better when we're surrounded by beautiful things like flowers, and we feel even better when we know that they've been grown sustainably and that they're helping wildlife. So soon we will be inviting other committees such as Earth Church, Aesthetics and Building and Grounds to join us in creating gardens. We'll feel a greater sense of accomplishment knowing that we planted them with our own hands and that they will provide us beauty in a sustainable way that feeds pollinators and our souls. As we approach Earth Day, Ellen Greenwood will be leading a service 
Um, and the spiritual practice that morning will be a bird walk that we hope you will join us for on our property here. My goal is to make this a, a birding hot spot so that people will come just to see our birds and growing more trees will help us with that. We will also be planning toward replacing our HVAC systems, which is a challenge and will probably require a future capital campaign or, and donations to the Fund for the Future. But right now, in this minute, this moment, being here now, please consider how you can help to support the less expensive efforts of our committee through your pledges. Thank you. Are there any questions? Okay, thank you. So I'm going to ask Michelle Knifing to come up as a representative of the marketing committee. Good morning, everyone. So about a year or so ago when the marketing committee was being formed, I hadn't been a member of the church for too long, and I was looking for ways to get more engaged, and I heard about the marketing committee, and my background is in marketing communications, so I was excited to volunteer. Um, one of the things that I had missed after I retired was the engagement with the team to bring forth new ideas and working them towards new initiatives and projects and seeing those come to fruition. So um, I work with a really great team and we have a lot of fun. Uh, so on the team is Curtis Dash, who's uh, pretty much our advisor on how to best serve our virtual participants and members. Uh, Elizabeth Corbett, who's the West Side's Programs and Marketing Coordinator, excuse me, Membership Coordinator, I got marketing on the mind. Uh, Brad Kurtz, our IT and Communications Professional, and pretty much West Side's point person for all communication vehicles. Um, even though the marketing committee comes up with a lot of ideas and develops projects, it's really Brad that does a lot of the implementation on the website, the Facebook page, the newsletter, et cetera. And Alice Thornton has been doing a wonderful job welcoming members and visitors for quite some time, and our new president-elect. So what is it that we do? We work on developing communications that reflect Westside's values and goals. Our commit specific committee goals include enhancing both the member and visitor experience, and then also assist in helping to grow church membership and participation. We support other committees as requested. For example, on the re, uh, request of the Stewardship Committee, we developed our new slogan, which you've heard a lot now, where love unites, caring connects, and community thrives. We do a lot of research in both Elizabeth and Alice's uh, participation in the church, they're in a great position to solicit visitor input and see how you know we can come up with ideas to enhance them to join and participate and be members. Um, also, Curtis collects feedback from our virtual West Side participants. We do research, too. From time to time, we visit other churches, both virtually and in person, both UU churches and other denominations, to try to grab some great ideas that would enhance the experience here for Westside. Uh, a specific example of this was updates to our overall website design, making it, making it easy to find key information easily. Oftentimes, we find out the visitors that come to Westside found out about us because of our website, and they found information that enticed them to come and become visitors, and we know that some of those people have become members. Other examples of our projects are creating the connection game for the mortgage playoff party, and we have a new connection discovery game for Dave's pledge drive party after the service. And we are working to try to figure out ways to get virtu our virtual attendees more engaged in some of those activities that happen after the service, but we're not quite there yet, but stay tuned. We're currently working on a revised logo that incorporates our green initiative while still retaining our UU and specific West Side values. We continue to do revisions to the West Side brochures, newsletter redesign, we created a visitor's area for meet and greet that is updated West Side and other UU reference materials. And Aesthetics is now taking that a step further. Um, and 
And so that's kind of a high level overview of what we do. We'll continue to work on communications that reflect our values, enhance the member and visitor experience, and assist in growing church membership and participation. So as part of the pledge drive, we're asking for your support. As we support Westside's vision, we want to be able to continue to improve our sound and digital communications capabilities, do more to support our community-related events and, and just get the word out about them effectively, update and enhance our graphics. So that's, um, that's what we do and we'd love to get your support. We're starting out with a fairly modest request, um, but we hope to grow that over time. Are there any questions or comments? All right, well, I will now introduce Elizabeth Corbett, who's co-chair of the Aesthetics Committee. Thank you. Good morning. As Michelle said, I'm Elizabeth Corbett, and this is my first day moving into the 21st century and trying to read something off my phone. <laughs> so forgive me. Um, as Michelle said, I'm co-chair of the Aesthetics Committee and other enthusiastic members include Judith Finer, Yetta Yeager, Bridget Ross, and Reverend Carroll. The Aesthetics Committee works closely with the Marketing Committee, the Building and Grounds Committee, the Screen Sanctuary Committee, and the Safety Committee to ensure that any project we undertake is tied to the goals of these four other committees. We work on enhancing members' experiences and visitors' visual, sorry, members' and visitors' visual experiences as they're involved with this church. One key focus is church beautification, both inside and outside of the building. Improving the appearance of various church areas can help us bring in rental income and attract more members over time. While we are a fairly new committee, you have already seen some of our work. We coordinated the decorations for the December holidays for the mortgage campaign party and what you see here today for the canvas. One of our goals for late spring and early summer is to repurpose the hallway leading from the foyer into the sanctuary. If you have a burning idea of how to redecorate or change up an area, please contact one of us members. And as everyone else has said, your pledge will help us reach these goals. It's important to us to continue having rentals it's in, important to us to continue um, bringing in new members, and it's important to us for us for those of us who are already here to be visually excited about what we see here. Are there any questions or comments? Okay. Well, I would like to ask Elizabeth Corbett to come up and to give us an update on the programs and membership. And here she is. <laughs> Other members of this committee include me and myself, and all three of us get exceptional guidance from Reverend Carroll. I think a lot about the needs of our current members and about the experiences of our visitors. I make phone calls to our members who have trouble getting to Sunday services, such as Lois Calhoun or the Legows. And in recent days, Elizabeth Colts Greenwood and Mike Chapin have signed the membership book. We'll have, yay. 
Um, Melanie Goldstein and Miranda Goldstein have both indicated that they would like to be members and they will be signing the book soon. And we'll have a new member's recognition during the ceremony, church service, on um, May 19th. And if you visited and you believe that you and West Side are a good fit, please get in touch with Reverend Carroll or me, myself, and I. On the program side, the major responsibilities include coordinating the justice and generosity projects. If you remember, we have done many things such as um, supporting book programs at the bottom. We have bought period products for Lenore City High School and Lenore City Middle School. At winter time, we provide four or five children through Family Promise with lots and lots of gifts. And one of the things Reverend Carol and I are working on is really trying to tie our justice and generosity projects to our Share the Plate partners. And the Share the Plate partner for this quarter is Knox Pride. And I am finalizing details for a project with them. Stay tuned through the weekly newsletter and the order of service for how you can get involved with that. And if you have any questions or comments, today, right now is the time. Okay, uh, next up is Linda Fippen for safety. So, so usually um, uh, Bridget Ross will speak for safety. She's not here today, so I'm going to just give a brief summary of what the, what the safety committee has been up to and what their plans are. Um, She's, they've been really active this past year. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but we have a lot more safety, uh, more security cameras than we used to. So we have an enhanced security camera system that can be monitored remotely. In addition, we, they have, we are installing new smoke and carbon monoxide um, detectors throughout the building, which can also be monitored remotely. Um, many thanks, many thanks to uh, Brad Kurtz and Dave Goforth for the many hours they've spent installing these cameras, and it's an ongoing process, so uh, thanks to, to all the work that they do. So one of the big things that the Safety Committee's been looking at is, um, you know, we have a population that could need um, emergency care, and we have 911, of course, but it would be good if we had people in the congregation who are trained to use CPR and also to use an external, an automatic exter external defibrillator. So uh, Bridget has been looking into um, how we might obtain this training and has been talking to the Red Cross. Um, and we're also looking at the purchase of one of the uh, defibrillators. So that will be uh, something that they will be, will be hearing more about in the future. But it would be um, something that the safety committee is doing to make us all feel safer and more secure when we're here. So uh, that's what they've been up to. Any questions about the safety committee? You can do. Boy, this is a, nobody's got questions this morning. Oh, Jerry, thank you. Here, wait, wait, for the, wait for the microphone. <laughs> Make sure it's. <laughs> thank you. Um, just kind of a commercial, you know, I, I tend to hang around in the back here on Sundays because I'm usually the safety volunteer on Sunday morning. Sometimes Barry helps and sometimes others, but we, we really have a thin crew of people in that rotation and I would love for several more people to step up and maybe be safety volunteer uh, once, once a month maybe. And uh, it, fortunately, it's usually a very boring job. We don't want it to be an exciting job. Yeah. Um, but like uh, Linda said, we're gonna get an external defib defibrillator and part of what I do as a safety person is keep an eye out for any kind of medical emergencies. Back when we had a religious education program down the hall, I uh, also checked in, uh, peeked in to make sure that the teachers weren't beating up on the kids or the kids beating up on the teachers. But that's not a problem right now. 
But, you know, we do have to think about emergency evacuations in case of a tornado, a severe thunderstorm, a fire, those kinds of things. So there are a number of things that go into the planning to be the safety volunteer, and I'd be happy to discuss that with any of you. I think Mike Chapin wanted to volunteer to help sometimes, but I kind of twist his arm a little bit. And so anybody else wants to help out, just let me know. Thanks, Jerry. Um, the one thing, go, um, J Judy, you have another customer here? <laughs> Hi, I'm Barry Schumpert. Um, I want to thank all the people that talked. I think they did a really good job of explaining what's going on. And I just wanted to kind of amplify that I'm, having served on the board for a few, several months now, uh, how much um, activity, energy, and thought these people that we've have been hearing have been putting into these projects mm -hmm. and, and the, the really great ideas that they've come up with. And uh, um, I'm not sure that's always visible if you're just sitting in the, in the seats in the, in the congregation, but uh, there's a lot of activity going on behind what, these, what the people said up here. Thanks, Barry. He's practicing being president. <laughs> Um, one thing that has go that goes on that I think kind of flow flies beyond, below the radar for most of for a lot of us is the, is the Earth Church services that that occur once a month, and I, I'd like to have Anne Hess come up and talk a little bit about it for those of us who are not aware of who they are, what they do, and how they contribute to West Side. Hello, my name is Ann Hess, um, and I wanted to talk about Earth Church today. Earth Church is part of the Wild Church Network, a group of communities responding to a deep call to change the way we relate to the natural world. Um, so we are part of the uh, larger congregate or the larger network, and it's a network of Christian, non-Christian, all denominations. They um, have created earth-based churches to celebrate nature, and we gather once a month at West Side to share sacred time outdoors. We honor the seasons with rituals and celebrations, and we attend to nature with reverence and respect. Instead of a traditional sermon, most gatherings consist of a 20-minute walk on the land, after which we come together to share our thoughts and insights. We focus on what we can learn from the natural world, whether it was a beautiful flower we happened upon, or a swarm of flies that would not leave us alone. After we have shared our insights from our time on the land, or shared in ritual celebrations, we share snacks and conversation. We have members of other UU congregations who attend and some people who are not affiliated with any UU church at all. They also attend. And Earth Church is actually the reason I chose West Side over other UU congregations. Um, it was a big draw for me. I just wanted to end with a, with a quote by Dave, Henry David Thoreau that speaks to the reasons behind Earth Church. We need a tonic of wilderness. At the same time that we are earnest to explore and learn all things, we require that all things be mysterious and unexplorable, that land and sea be indefinitely wild, unsurveyed and unfathomed by us because they are unfathomable. We can never have enough of nature. Any questions? Thank you, Anne. And, and you've all had an opportunity to ask questions, and if anybody has forgot that they might, or just occurred to them that they might have a question for any of the speakers? Here we go. Judy, we have. Yeah. Oh, you're supposed to stay there, and I'm supposed to come to you. <laughs> I got my running shoes on. Thank you. Uh, I had a question about the safety committee. Sure. Do you have any um, way that you go about mental health or like emotional crisis type of situations? Yes, that's good. Thank you for asking that. We, it is something that is under consideration. Uh, one of the thing we're looking into, we've been discussing it in the board and, and the safety committee as well, is um, 
ways it to intervene, so it's like de-escalation processes and ways to um, to deal with a, a mental health situation or an aggressive person. So that, that is something that's under consideration. We're looking at, which it's actually surprisingly difficult to find information on, on how to do that. So but it's an ongoing thing. Thank you for asking. That is an important thing. Mm. Judy. Judy. This is getting good. Uh, yeah. Okay. No, the, no, the rest of us can do this. This has got to be you. Um, I'm Suzanne Molnar. Just, I'm, okay, I'm Suzanne Howell also now. <laughs> as, <laughs> as of eight days ago, yes. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, I just, <laughs> yeah, still a blushing bride, right? <laughs> uh, I just wanted to ask you, Linda, to mention the other committees that weren't being represented in case there are people who are basically thinking, well, what committee would I like to be involved in? And could you just mention the ones who are not having anybody stand up? Okay, let's see. <laughs> Put me on the spot. Let's see what is other committees there are. What are you thinking of? Uh, welcoming committee. The Welcoming Congregation Committee, absolutely. Welcoming, and only peripherally mentioned the building and grounds who did not talk to us, but shoot, I mean, look at that yeah. out there. That's, they did that. Yes, that, thank you. We were focusing this time on committees that were new and, and ones that new, had new, new requests for funds in the budget. That's why they were particularly focused on today. But yes, absolutely, the work of the building and grounds has been so important. I mean, we would, I mean, I could say, let's look at it. <laughs> You're right. Um, I think so we have another question. And the welcoming congregation as well. We do, we have, our focus for a long time was on the welcoming congregation. We still have those goals and we still want to be of service to the LGBTQ plus community, but um, it's, not a, it's not, not something new that we're doing, but actually it's an ongoing process. So. Well, I've been reading in the newsletter that regarding the comment about mental health that NAMI is meeting on um, first Wednesdays of the month from 6.30 to 8 here at church and uh, NAMI stands for Alliance of Mental okay, Illness and Charles Smith is one of the facilitators um, so that is an opportunity for some of us with questions or concerns. Thanks, Elizabeth. That is important. I've I, I got a question for Charles about that group. You've met one, two times? Twice. Twice, okay. And are you are the people coming who are not members of you uh, here? Yeah? Yeah. We, All right. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. So, so right now it's the only in-person uh, meeting in Knox. Oh, sorry. Right now it's the only in-person meeting in Knox County. The rest are actually online and they're trying to rebuild after COVID and things like that, so yeah. Yeah. I just want to mention that we do collect food for a food pantry. We don't have the pantry here, but there is another church that we take any food that is uh, people are willing to bring. We have a basket out in the narthex, and feel free, uh, and the food will be taken to the other church that does have a pantry. And one of the things I'm working on doing is that when it's potluck Sunday, I say to myself, time to bring in something for the food pantry too. So those first Sundays, I'm bringing in food for the food pantry. Well, every time I go to the grocery store, I say one item's gotta be for the food pantry. Anybody else? Okay. Yep. <laughs> Uh, just related, I guess, to uh, uh, our Earth uh, 
What am I trying to say? The Green Sanctuary a little bit. We got some uh, donated plants from the Green Sanctuary group down to Tennessee Valley UU Church, and they're sitting on the front porch. They're Maximilian sunflowers, so help yourself take them away. They get 10 feet tall, and they're perennial, so if you get them established, wow. you'll have them for a long time. Okay, great. Wow. Okay, anybody else? Thank, thank you all for participating. Oh, we have a question from Thomas. Comment? Why won't you get them going? You can't shut them up. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Thomas. And um, I just had, um, I don't know what committee is in charge of, because like you were saying, be nice to have more people, right? And to bring them in, it's just an idea. Um, there is a radio station in Farragut that is heavily involved in Farragut. Most of their advertising is with, you know, Farragut um, and, and the, the activities that go on. Um, I know a, a lady that owns a jewelry shop and, and we're friends. And she's always, she's always advertising through them. So they don't have a huge amount of advertising because they're, they're a smaller station. But they play excellent music and it's what I have tuned into my car all the time. And I'm thinking if more businesses, and, and she said, geez, how can you uh, not advertise? She says they're, they're so cheap. So because they're smaller, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and they, they're not going to have the listener base that maybe a, a stronger station or a, a city station would have. So it's just a cost effective way. And I could think of an awful lot of ways that because especially since they're focused um, somewhat on the Farragut and I guess probably maybe have a little bit stronger draw here in this area, you might be able to enlighten more people that way. But just to maybe look in on how much, I, she told me and it was like really a, a, a bargain, you know, because you're, you're gonna hear the name a lot on the station and it may be something to draw more people in if they find out that, well, there's this church in Farragut and it's like I can, I can be who I want and go there. Maybe I can give it a shot and see what it's all about. Um, and if I like it, I've got a friend or whatever, and it may be able to bring more people in. Okay. Suggestion. Okay, it's something that the marketing and yes. membership committees could think about. Absolutely. Thank you. What's the column? What, what's the, where is that on the column? Uh, it is what they call West 105. I think it's 105.3. Uh, I can't think of the call letters. W-I-V-K, I think. Mm -hmm. No, that's a different one, isn't it? Oh, uh, I'm drawing. I'm drawing a blank on on the um, call letters or um, the uh, station call letters, but it is 105.3, and they call it West 105. That's the okay. slogan. Thank you. Okay. I, I caught that station once, and um, it's everything you said. Good music, lots of local advertising. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, thank, and uh, I think it's just, it might just be Alice and Jerry who take care of the stretch of Grigsby Chapel out here. Does that fall under grounds or for our church, you know, or is that even an active thing right now? Our name's on that stretch of Grigsby Chapel for adopting, you know. Okay. <laughs> now that you mention it, that, that is something that we have done for the community. Okay, yeah, because I'm out here working over in Fox Run twice a week, so if you guys need, okay. Okay, all right, lots of, lots of good ideas. Lots of good ideas. Okay, well, I was going to talk about justice and generosity, but Elizabeth and Alice uh, stole most of my thunder, but I will say a couple things. Um, if you do might like to make donations outside of the pledge process, you can certainly use the box in the back of the room. On the website, there's a way to sign up. You can put a check in the box. Um, and or you can use the QR code on the website. There's a QR code and you can also, I think there's information, there's information on your order of service. 
and maybe even in the newsletter, who knows? There's lots of stuff in there. I think that's about it. So I'm going to have a few, a very few closing words. Uh, oh no, I, you're right. After the questions and answers, right, Anne, you're right. I'm going to ask Anne to come up. It's okay. I'm bringing up my very sophisticated finance chair file cabinet, <laughs> and it holds pledge forms. And so uh, just a quick reminder, since this is once a year, uh, thanks to Brad, these are all printed out and your pledge form has your name on it. And um, for those of you that don't pick it up today and if you're uh, listening, live streaming, we'll, I'll mail it to you. So there's directions in there for um, to fill out the pledge form online. You can go to Vanco on the um, on the website, the West Side web, uh, web, the West Side website, or you can fill out your form and bring it back to church next Sunday and give it to me or Craig or Shirley. You're part of this finance committee, and um, we'll take it from there. You can mail it back. For those of you that. Um, are not on our membership rolls and would like to pledge, I have some ple extra pledge forms. So I will be um, visiting you during lunch and handing out your um, pledge form. Thank you. Thanks, Anne. Okay, so now I do have just a very few closing words, but would you please remain seated for just a minute after we close here? Um, these words are from the UUA Worship website, and they come from Sidney K. Wild. It's called In This Community. It says, In this community, we give and we receive. May we go forth now to share the bounty of our love. Go in peace, but stay for lunch. <laughs> and now, uh, Michelle has just a couple words for you, too.